Hi, welcome back to Particular Model Railway. I'm Darshan. In this video, I will show you the steps that we have taken to build this helix to connect the main layout to the fiddle yard we are building uh, on the second level. To do, do my helix I have used the MDF boards uh, which normally comes at um, 4 feet by 8 feet. So this MDF board is um, 12 millimeters uh, thick and uh, the reason I used the MDF was um, mainly because of uh, cost and uh, the availability uh, because there are other good materials that you could have used but they were not available and during the covid time uh, i was uh, not sure whether i will be able to get hold of them uh, the amount that i needed so this mdf board seems to be at a very good quality uh, and the, it had a very good finish as well so uh, and uh, the, it was recommended by the hardware shop as well because the uh, premier quality uh, mdf boards um, so I bought a few of them and then every board was cut into two so it comes as a four by four uh, square and each uh, each square is used for one uh, layer one level so here you can see we are cutting the board uh, into two uh, we used a, a router to get the middle part out uh, using a router as uh, given that uh, nice finish rather than cutting it with a um, a jigsaw. Once that is cut you can see this um, uh, first layer being um, uh, prepared. Um, so uh, on the left, uh, left side you can see that uh, two tracks will come and connect to the fiddle yard and uh, then it will continue. Uh, so the, the side uh, corners were cut off uh, so that it will give a bit of a, a more flexibility when you're trying to lift the uh, one level uh, lift the angles and uh, and get the grade correct uh, correct and uh, the other thing that i was thinking you know if you are going to put the thread bars it is easier to have that um, uh, extra allowance for them to go through uh, rather than having it uh, much closer to the tracks so done the uh, cut the layers all the all, all probably we cut um, around five or probably six uh, 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 layers three boards and then it was professionally painted with uh, spray paint so here you can see uh, I did a, uh, a steel frame uh, for the stand and uh, one of the layers that we cut we used it as the base layer and that was permanently uh, it was fixed to the uh, uh, frame um, so we planned it to build everything inside but in case if we had to take it out uh, you can actually remove the uh, screws and separate this base layer which will uh, come with the whole uh, helix on top uh, so that way you know you will end up with uh, just a legs separated from the helix so in case i have want to move it uh, it can be done as well uh, but the whole uh, whole uh, helix has been built inside the room uh, which is not uh, 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 which cannot be moved anywhere else uh, for the time being uh, then we did this uh, using this aluminium rod we marked the exact uh, radius that we will need so the outer outer uh, curve is uh, at uh, 22.5 and the and the inner uh, radius is 20 so uh, using this um, uh, uh, you know uh, aluminium uh, uh, bar we were able to do some exact um, uh, outlines so as you can see here the outlines have been done and we are starting on the first layer you can see the template that we have used so I bought all the track setter templates but uh, in that set 
I didn't get the 20 or the 22 inch, uh, 22.5 inch um, radius uh, um, in a template. So I went to a local shop which uh, does a laser cutting. So using that, uh, we gave the exact measurements and uh, uh, we were able to get these um, templates done. Uh, so I think this is uh, very important when you're doing the flex, uh, flex tracks. Uh, you get the templates uh, built uh, and it was quite easy for them to cut it uh, and uh, it was um, uh, if he didn't do the uh, templates it would have been a really um, a difficult task to get the uh, curves uh, done properly so all the tracks uh, the flex tracks were screwed uh, using uh, uh, tra track screws um, oh, which is uh, uh, not the normal practice that I do because normally all the tracks I glue them uh, to uh, uh, to the baseboard or the uh, track bed because it gives a better finish when you are doing the scenery you don't uh, see the screws um, so so I think uh, but, but for the helix I, I thought of uh, just uh, screwing them uh, 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 to secure the tracks because uh, this way in, ca in case I want to take it out it will be easy and the other thing is um, you know time uh, if you're going to glue them and uh, it's going to be very time consuming because the glue has to dry at least for 24 hours so here you can see uh, we are just working our way through the first uh, first le uh, level uh, you know every level has been tested properly uh, you know, this is a small loco that I had, uh, a DC loco that was uh, tested because it's um, just just to make sure that the uh, tracks are all aligned and there are no, uh, you know, uh, derailments while when you're uh, when you're run, uh, running these trains. Um, uh, as you will see, they are, we have used a bigger uh, loco at the uh, for the next levels. Uh, you know, this was just a. Um, uh, small um, uh, uh, engine running and uh, and uh, it is very very important that I can't stress the uh, uh, emphasis on, on getting it uh, checked because uh, once you do the first layer it's very difficult to go and correct if there are any 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 mistakes on the on the level that's uh, below uh, the first uh, so so every layer has to be uh, checked before continuing with the second uh, with the layer bow. This is just a small device I, I just uh, um, improvised because I have seen some videos uh, where they show show them uh, special uh, gadgets to run the uh, nuts on the, th the thread bar but uh, here we have used um, uh, it is actually a runner that comes with aluminium fittings to, uh, so I had a uh, few lying in my uh, toolbox so I used it uh, used it to fix fix it to a drill and then uh, to run the nuts uh, on the threaded bar. Uh, this show, this photo shows that uh, there's a super elevation on the tracks. So um, you're using a um, uh, spirit level, you can get this uh, done uh, because uh, since we are using the threaded bar, it is quite easy to adjust. This uh, super elevation has been used uh, on each and every level. The uh, the grade uh, for each track is um, I think for the outer track it's around um, 2.65 or something like that and 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 uh, uh, for the inner uh, track it will be slightly higher uh, I don't think it will have any problems for my trains to climb uh, even if it's not, not being able to climb I have another uh, uh, small uh, loco. The plan is to have a small loco that will just push them up and uh, just uh, help them to climb up. The train that can, uh, that can climb, uh, which, which is not an issue, but if the, there are certain trains that are not being able to uh, pull through, then it can be helped with another extra loco pushing uh, from behind. Um, so then once that first level is done then obviously second level goes in this is where we actually realized why you should have um, uh, two parts per uh, cycle uh, drop the second uh, uh, layer on top and here you see the problem you know once we drop the second level because it is one cycle uh, per board at the end of the first tracks where it's going to end 
you know you won't be able to screw them until if you put the put the second layer on top because the second layer is going to overlap where the uh, where the first layer is ending but uh, so we thought about it and we thought uh, let's uh, shall we cut uh, it into half and then uh, do it that way so it will be much easier but then uh, with the MDF board so we were we had some flexibility to to um, lift the board uh, right at the end and then uh, finish the uh, track on the first level and just bring it uh, where the second level second board is starting so here you can see we are just uh, you know uh, jacked it up and then uh, then uh, screwing the final uh, bit and then once that is done it's easier to uh, continue with the second uh, second level uh, the second uh, second board so it, it, it's it's a preference uh, you know we thought we can get away with it and uh, we uh, we didn't have any issues uh, with this uh, but uh, you know uh, if you want you can have it in uh, in two uh, two sections as well uh, if uh, the, that is uh, preferable but uh, here the advantage is you just have to make one connection at, uh, at where the boards are joining and once that is uh, secured it is quite smooth all the way uh, until the next board is uh, where the next board connects so here again you can see this is uh, 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 HO scale um, uh, loco uh, HO scale uh, locos are more sensitive for uh, track uh, uh, track tolerance uh, so I thought this will be the best uh, local to run on the for the test and once the, if this can run without any issue then uh, there won't be any problem with uh, any of the other locals that I have so so I ended up uh, testing it uh, thoroughly with this um, uh, local uh, I think it's ASD 40 type uh, local both ways it will run and could runs quite fast so you can actually speed up and uh, you know, make sure that everything is uh, working well so then uh, you know we did use uh, the uh, insulated joints uh, to uh, have the block detection so I think uh, each track has around uh, four separate blocks uh, uh, from start to bottom with the flexi track uh, as you can see there are many other videos how to join them please have a look the, the first level is actually the most important thing where that's where you have to get the grade right so once the grade is uh, correct uh, on the first layer it's, you can just uh, make sure you can make a template and I think um, the, the gap between uh, each layer is around 4 inches or 3 and 3 quarter inches probably so I made a, a template and using that uh, block uh, temp template uh, you can actually space all the other uh, layers on top so it's the first layer that uh, has to be done properly and uh, the first layer by the time it gets to the end of its cycle it, it has to come up to the minimum height that you require so in my case it's around um, uh, four inches so based on that um, you know the the grade for my tracks the outer track is around um, uh, 2.65 and uh, uh, and the inner track will be slightly more so there's a good video about the uh, uh, gradients uh, uh, one of my uh, friends made uh, Anthony's hobby uh, please have a look and um, it, it is I will put a link over here uh, that that, in, uh, that uh, shows how the what the grade that you should have what's the ideal grade you should have and uh, how you can achieve and when you look at that uh, video you can see in it it's a, it is a quite a uh, quite a, quite a task to get the recommended grade because the recommended grade is around two so if you are going to get a uh, grade of two then you have to have at least 14 feet of track uh, 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 tr track to climb that uh, height so it is quite a task so have a look and he has explained how you can achieve by uh, by raising the base level uh, slightly up uh, this mainly for the uh, layouts rather than the helix my helix is um, as I said it's around uh, 
six five or something, which is uh, which is okay because I think I have a slightly bigger grade than this on my layout itself. So anything that can go on the layout will actually climb on the on the on the helix as well. But the helix uh, there's an added uh, task of uh, the for the locomotive because it has to. Uh, it has to go on the on the curve uh, climbing so which is which gives more resistance than climbing on a straight straight track uh, and uh, here you can see qu quite a few of the layers have been done and I think this might be the last layer uh, so once that is done I just painted the top layer so that it's uh, uh, it actually has a black uh, uh, base uh, so that when you are uh, doing the scenery it will be it will blend in uh, then uh, here's another picture where I have added a, a extra border uh, to the side on the on the on the bottom level you can see on the on the right side there's a two tracks that coming from the helix and uh, there is a, a crossover section as well so all the uh, points have uh, underneath we have uh, 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 placed and uh, placed the screws so it will be easier for us to fix them once uh, once I get the point motors so all these ones will be fitted with the DCC concept of point motors and uh, and then there's uh, other uh, two uh, extra tracks that will come uh, from the uh, fiddle yard uh, which will be used. This is mainly in, a, in, in case if I want to extend my fiddle yard to the other side as well. So these two tracks will actually carry uh, trains uh, to the other uh, other section on the on the second level, which is uh, not going to happen anytime soon. Finally, I just want to show you how the wiring is been done. So it's uh, normally. Uh, how we will do this uh, solder it to the tracks but uh, uh, the, um, the track uh, uh, the wires are quite uh, visible because uh, the main point is to get it uh, securely fixed uh, and uh, properly connected because you don't want to um, go back and uh, do things at a later stage um, so that's why these wires are quite uh, visible um, and as you can see underneath, you will see that groove uh, to run the wires from the outer track. So that has that uh, uh, pattern is followed in all the all the um, layers. Uh, some we have to secure a bit more. The main reason for that groove is so that you don't compromise on on the height when the trains are running underneath. That's the last thing you want to uh, have any wires hanging low and uh, catching the trains. Uh, and uh, as you can see, all these wires, I have used the uh, normal, it's called the TT wires here. It's, I think it's twisted uh, twin pair uh, wires. Uh, so uh, they come pre-twisted anyway. Uh, so that's the wire that I, I think it has around 14 uh, copper cables 0.2 uh, millimeter or something like that so that's what I have used so uh, on the tracks itself uh, you know every joint we have soldered them uh, apart from the insulated joints uh, and uh, then if I can show you one probably something over there so all the tracks are soldered and also connected through the wire, so um, each track uh, has um, uh, these bus wires coming from both sides, so there won't be any loss of uh, power or connection. Uh, so as you come around, you will see uh, this is where all the where I put the terminal block and uh, uh, the the wires come. Uh, come and connect here. So this wiring has been done for block detection and uh, once uh, the new system is uh, put in place uh, uh, DR5000 then I will properly do the uh, uh, current sensor modules will be connected here. Uh, until then I have just connected for the uh, to my NCE system to run the trains. 
uh, so all these things will connect to the main board which is somewhere around there I think um, so that's how the wiring is being done so all in all it has been very uh, very challenging and very interesting to build this and I'm really glad how it has worked out and um, I, I think I, I want to have this um, uh, video done uh, uh, quickly because uh, there are uh, so many videos that have been uh, out there for how to do helix and uh, uh, this is probably the combination of all the words all the things that I've seen and uh, the knowledge that I've gathered so I don't want to or you to uh, spend time on uh, having the same thing over and over again so I have just um, uh, ran quickly on how I've done this helix and thank you